Okay, here we go. Lesson 9.2. We will be uh, solving quadratic equations um, using square roots. So in section 6.1, you remember studying the properties of square roots. So here we are going to use square roots to solve some quadratic equations in the form of ax squared plus c equal to zero. All right, so we can solve these. We can take the square root of each side. So when d is greater than zero, we can solve x squared equals d has two real roots, right? Plus or minus the square root of d. When it's equal to zero, there's only one real solution, and that is zero. If it is less than zero, it is no real solutions. And the reason for this, if you can recall, we cannot do the square root of a negative number, right? We are not yet doing imaginary numbers. You will be doing that in Algebra 2 in high school. So for now, we'll say no real solutions. So looking at the examples, um, for A, you have 3x squared minus 27 is equal to 0 want to start by adding 27 to both sides. Then you can divide both sides by 3. You really want to isolate the variable, the squared variable, so that you could take the square root of both sides. Um, then you'll get x is equal to the plus or minus square root of 9, which is plus or minus 3. So you get x is 3 and negative 3. And then, you know, which one it is is going to depend on the content or context of the problem. If we're looking for a linear measure, we would never use a negative number because that doesn't make sense in a measurement. Um, here we have x squared minus 10 equal to negative 10. So if you add 10, you get x squared equals 0. So we have one solution, x is equal to 0. And here's that example of no solution because if we subtract 11 from each side and then um, divide by a negative 5, we get x squared equals negative 1. Trying to take the square root of that, we cannot take the square root of a negative number with no real solutions. It's only imaginary. So. Well, let's get started and do several examples. Okay. So first up, uh, let's go ahead and isolate the variable. So we can divide both sides by negative 3. And we would get x squared is equal to, um, because they're both negative, we would get a positive 25. Then you could take the square root of both of these and you would get um, x is equal to plus or minus 5 because you're going to get plus or minus the square root of 25. So we'll get positive 5, right? x equals 5 and x equals negative 5. All right, over here for number 2, subtract 12 and you get x squared equals negative 2. Taking the square root of a negative 2, not really allowed. Therefore, no real solutions here. And maybe we should use the word real solutions because we could get a solution. It would just involve imaginary numbers, and we're not there yet. OK, for number 3, moving right along, add 15 to both sides. And then, you know, divide by 4. Go ahead and do that. So you get x squared is equal to 0. And take the square root of that, x is equal to 0. So this stage, you're taking the square root. And there really is no plus or minus 0. So keep that in mind. All right. Working problems that look like this. Now, um, now this is... Uh, binomial okay this is not we can't use the product rule you know there's not a product in here this is a sum so we could take the square root of the entire left side right and the entire right side so when you do that you get x plus seven just get one of those is equal to basically zero. 
um, plus or minus zero, but in this case, zero, because it's neither positive or negative. And then you'll subtract seven. So we have one solution here, x is negative seven, okay? Over here, let's clean this up a little bit and first divide both sides by four, okay? So now we have our x minus three quantity squared is equal to this nine fourths. When we take the square root of both sides, we're going to get x minus three is equal to, and we get this positive or negative, um, basically three halves, right? So we have two solutions. We have x minus three is equal to three over two, and or we have x minus three is equal to a negative three over two. In each case, we want to add three to both sides, right? And right here, we're gonna find that x is equal to basically four and a half, right? Nine halves, four and a half. Or over here, we're gonna find that x is equal to a one and a half. Because you would have three halves. So those are the two outcomes. All right, let's look at number six. We're ready to go ahead and take the square root of both sides because there's nothing to really clean up. All right, notice that this is not a perfect square. So we're gonna get two x plus one is equal to, and we'll have to leave that in radical form. All right, not ready to simplify this, but it is plus or minus the square root of 35. So we have um, two situations, we have, 2x plus 1 is equal to the square root of 35, or we have 2x plus 1 is equal to a negative square root of 35. So I'm going to go ahead and leave. I'm going to do this. I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides, but I'm going to write it so I'll have 2x is equal to, now I'm going to write this first. I'm going to write negative 1 plus the square root of 35. And over here, I'm gonna write two x is equal to negative one minus the square root of 35. Then I'm gonna divide both sides by two. So when that cancels, you get x is equal to negative one plus the square root of 35 divided by two. Or you get negative one minus the square root of 35 divided by two, sorry, boxing that in. So take a second to make sure that the whole 35 is under the radical. Okay, oops. And I'll give you a second to get that all copied down, pause the video, whatever you need to do, but those are the two solutions. Yes, and of course, you know, depending on what we're needing and what we're calculating, sometimes simplifying that all the way down to or approximating it to a decimal, um, we can do that but know that this is irrational, therefore it's a non-terminating, non-repeating decimal. Sometimes we leave it in radical form, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and just do a real life application. All right, in this case, it says a, a touch tank, um, I guess you're touching stingrays or whatever you're touching, dolphins, I don't know, has a height of three feet. I kind of show that height right there. Its length is three times its width. So I sometimes like to label the parts. And we have oops, three times W for the length. Okay, so the length is equal to three W. The volume of the tank is 450 cubic feet. So they, we, we're also working with this formula, length times width times height. And we're given the height. Okay. So we're also given the 450. So let's substitute in what we know. 450 
is equal to the length is going to be this 3w, the width is w, and the height is 3. So let's go ahead and multiply that all together. So 450 is equal to 3 times 3 is 9, and w times w is w squared. All right. Now we're trying to solve for w because we're going to need to find the length and the width. So we'll divide both sides by 9. And I'm getting 50 is equal to w squared. And here is where I'm going to take the square root of both sides. Okay. And now I'm at the point where w is equal to plus or minus the square root of 50. And think about this. What is it that we're finding? What is the width? The width is a linear measurement. Does the negative value really have any value to us? No, it does not. So approximating the square root of 50, if you put it into your calculator, we could say that the width is approximately uh, 7.1 feet. And then we know the length is three times the width. So the length is equal to three times this 7.1 feet. So that's going to be approximately 21.3 feet. So we have a width of 7.1 feet, length 21.3 feet. Okay. All right. Lesson 9.2, vocabulary and concept check reasoning or which one doesn't belong. So you choose, make sure that you're writing in complete sentences. Let me know which one you are responding to. And of course, if you have any questions, please let me know what they are. And that will do it for this lesson. Um, I will see you in class tomorrow. Have a great night.